we are talking Hacksaw. This one written and directed by Anthony Leon. He's obviously a big fan of the kind of the slasher movies from the 70s and early 80s, the likes of Driller Killer and Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Now the movie opens with quite a graphic scene. We actually see a woman being tortured and violated in a, let's just call it, ham sandwich by a automatic drill. And that kind of sets the tone for what you can probably expect for elements within the movie. Now, the, the main story focuses on a young couple. The female, played by Amy Kay, and her fiancé decide that they're going to travel across America to visit one of their parents to announce their uh, upcoming nuptials. However, along the way, for some reason, they decide to stop off at this abandoned building, which was apparently housing once a notorious serial killer. Now, of course, this abandoned mill building might not be abandoned after all, and the inevitable happens. So what can we say in the plus column for Hacksaw? I would say two things. Number one, if you are a fan of the screen queens of the 80s, then I feel Amy Kay may well um, scratch that itch for you, because I think she looks the part very much aping that kind of look of the screen queens of the films of the 80s. And yeah, she's a lovely looking lady, and um, I think it's very much of you know of that time, and she fits the bill in regards to kind of physical casting, shall we say. Number two, if you kind of like your torture porn and graphic gore films, there are scenes here that I think that you would maybe kind of, you know, get something out of, so we say. Because the movie, although we're going to talk about some negatives in a minute, is certainly some kind of graphic gore. And for a very, very low-budget film, it is done to a fairly kind of explicit standard, to be honest with you, and is actually quite shocking. I think maybe it goes, you know, for some people at least, it's going to kind of go to become a little bit too disturbing, I think. It does kind of uh, have some fairly hardcore scenes in it, let's just say that. And the budget clearly very, very, clearly very kind of uh, minimal here, I think has mainly gone into some, uh, some practical work here. But they are my two positives, and even they, to be honest with you, are subjective depending on what you actually want from a film. Now, the film is relatively short. However, despite the short running time, the film is incredibly boring. Um, it starts out with a very kind of a, uh, a gory scene, but to be honest with you, that's the kind of the last we'll see of it until the third act. And the movie's only kind of like probably less than 70 minutes. The first two acts are... We'll talk about them, and then we'll talk about the third act. The first two acts are complete filler, to be honest. Um, and that even they, they have some, some issues. So we don't really know our characters, especially our male character. Uh, and some of the, kind of the scenes here, and probably the majority of the scenes in the first two acts, in fact, are, are actually um, found footage. But there are scenes that aren't found footage, so it doesn't really make sense. Um, and then it even kind of intersplices sometimes when we kind of get to the building between found footage film sort of camera angles and then standard camera angles. And it doesn't really make sense, to be honest with you. If you're going to have a found footage movie, you've kind of got to have it uh, the whole way through. Although it doesn't kind of make sense within the context of the film. As I've said, the characterization is is really thin. In fact, I'm going to say here, and this is my speculation, that the dialogue was just off the cuff. I don't think there was much in the way of script here, because the dialogue really doesn't kind of tell you anything about the characters. It just feels like they're kind of riffing and trying to, you know, have some interactions to, to pad out the running time and, and kind of have some dialogue for the characters, but it, it doesn't tell you anything. Um, and seems very, very superfluous, and just these kind of like, uh, these characters arguing about food or something like that. Doesn't really make a lot of sense in regards to kind of dialogue and, and, and kind of setting character, you know, motivations and arcs and stuff like that. It's poorly done. Um, the editing is quite poor. Uh, there are scenes here that are very, very poorly edited and will kind of, uh, flick back and forth um, and don't really kind of mesh particularly well. 
the acting isn't brilliant, to be honest. And like I've said, I, I don't think it helps that either there was some really bad dialogue written or the actors were just asked to somewhat improvise but didn't really know what to say. Because that's what it feels like. So the, the acting here seems very forced where people don't really know each other but they're trying to act like they do and so they're having these kind of like quite forced conversations. It doesn't kind of really feel particularly uh, natural and stuff like that. And it really, nothing happens, to be honest with you. It, it's such a filler. The other thing that happens in the first two acts is we get these kind of infomercials uh, about this kind of like this TV host doing interviews about this building and stuff. They drag on and on and on and offer nothing for actual plot of the film. I guess they're meant to be some sort of exposition to give you the kind of the history of, of this, um, you know, of this killer and stuff. But it's just, it gets, it's not interesting. Um, it has no relevance to the plot. And to be honest with you, when we see our killers, it doesn't kind of make sense anyway. And I say killers because I'm not even sure how many there are. Um, then we get to our sort of third act, finally. It's sitting for, you know, it's, it feels like it's gone on for ages at this point, but it's a relatively short film. Uh, now, there's no real reason why these this couple are going to this abandoned building. I mean, they're, they're complaining about having to go the long way, uh, but they, they, they stop off at this, like, really dilapidated old building. Oh, let's go in here. Stupid. And then immediately kind of run into the killers. Now, I don't actually know how many killers there are, if I'm completely honest, because we're told in the exposition that there is a killer, uh, but then we see multiple different people in there, and I'm thinking, well, how many are there? Um, the movie also tries to have somewhat of a psychological twist towards the end. doesn't make sense. I'm not going to tell you what it is, but it doesn't, doesn't make sense. Um, and... To be honest with you, the kind of the, some of the, again, the, the poor editing I'm going to say here, when we get to these kind of the more horror elements of the movie, there's some poor editing choices, um, and, and the effects, although the gore effects are, I think, um, fairly strong, some of the kind of the setup that leads to that I think is quite weak in regards to how our killer or slash killers are acting and stuff like this. It doesn't really make a lot of sense, to be honest with you. Overall, as a package, I think this is a very, very poor film. I think some people, if you like very kind of like, you know, your hardcore gore films, but to be honest with you, although there are some scenes in here that are very, very sort of brutal and gory, and I think, to be honest with you, mean-spirited, they're, they're actually not all that much because the running time has this big bulk at the, in the kind of like the, uh, the first two acts where nothing happens. Um, but anyway, I honestly don't think there's much here to kind of like to, 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 to recommend. And even kind of, um, you know, fans of, of gory flicks, to, to be honest with you, there's not a lot of context in it. There's just like gore scenes. You're better off just watching these the gore scenes and have because there's not really a lot of context to the rest of the film. That our kind of killer is so um, killer or killers because I honestly don't know what was actually kind of going on there. Are so thinly sort of sketched out and we, we just don't know what the kind of like the, anything really about them. And that might think oh it's meant, it's meant to be mysterious. It's going to be this mystery. I don't I just don't care because I, I have. It doesn't seem to kind of make a lot of sense. They're just hanging around in this old, inbuilt, old building. Um, where, what's happened with the police if there's apparently 300 murders? It just doesn't make sense. Um, and, they, and then what is going on with this random things that are in there? It's just, it's just bananas. And this is like in the middle of a middle of a, what looks like a city. It doesn't. It's not like out in the rural kind of like your Texas chains of Mexico backwards. This looks like it's in a relatively urbanised area. It's just poor. Um, overall, very little to recommend this film. It is actually quite hard to sit through. Um, like I said, there are if you if you just really want some hardcore gore scenes um, with very little context, then there are there are a couple of scenes there that you. That you may want, but like I said, I I, I don't know. To me, it just it, it was kind of mean spirited, to be honest. And uh, without the kind of the context around it, they just seemed like 
kind of pointless. I'm gonna give this one a two out of ten. Have you seen it? What did you think of it? Leave me a comment and I'll look forward to seeing it next time. Bye for now.